Hello and welcome to another Leak Code Solution video. This is problem number 37, Sudoku Solver. For this problem, we write a program to solve a Sudoku puzzle by filling the empty cells. A Sudoku solution must satisfy all of the following rules. Each of the digits 1 through 9 must occur exactly once in each row. Each of the digits 1 through 9 must occur exactly once in each column. Each of the digits 1 through 9 must occur exactly once in each of the 9 3x3 three three sub boxes of the grid. The period character indicates empty cells. For example 1, we're given the Sudoku board visually, as well as how it will be given to us in the input. This is the output of this example, and you can see that each row has the numbers 1 through 9 exactly once, each column has the numbers 1 through 9 exactly once, and each of the sub boxes has the numbers 1 through 9 exactly once. Let's go through an example. For this problem, we're given this input board for our Sudoku board. And for our solution, we're gonna use backtracking and recursion. So for our solution, we're gonna go through each row one at a time, column by column, and check each of the empty spaces in our board, which is represented by the period, and try entering a number one through nine into the space and checking to see if it's valid. We'll check to see if it's valid by checking if the number we inserted into the space exists already in that row or in that column, or in that three by three sub box. If it does not exist, we'll enter it in and move on to the next empty space. If it does exist, we'll try the next number. We'll try putting one in. If one is not valid, we'll try two. And if two is valid, we'll put two in and move on to the next number. But just because that number we put in there is valid at that time does not mean that will be the number that will remain there for the output solution. So we might get to a point in our board where no number is valid in that spot and at that point we'll have to use backtracking to go back through our solution changing the numbers until we have a valid output board again we'll try this for our first row so starting at our first empty space we'll try putting the number one in and we'll check our row our row does not have one so it's valid in our row we'll check our column there's no one in our column so it's valid and we'll check our three by three sub box which has no one so one is valid here and we'll move on to the next number now at our next empty space we'll try one again we have a one in our row and our column so it's not valid here so we'll move on to two we'll put a two in there's no two in our row so it's valid for our row we'll check our column there's no two in our column so it's valid and we'll check our sub box there's no two in our sub box so two is valid here so now we'll move on to the next empty space. We'll try one, it's not valid, there's a one in our row. We'll try two, it's not valid, there's a two in our row. We'll try three, it's not valid, there's a three in our row. We'll try four, there's no other four in the row, so it's valid. There's no other four in the column, so it's val valid for the column. And there's no other four in the sub box, so this number is valid here. We'll move on to the next empty space. We'll try putting one. One is not valid because it's in the row already. We'll try two, same thing. 3, same thing, 4, same thing, 5, there's a 5 in the row, so it's not valid. We'll move on to 6. There's no 6 in our row, so it's valid. There's no 6 in our column, so it's valid. But there is a, another 6 in our 3x3 three three sub box, so 6 is not valid. So now we'll move on to 7. 7 is not valid because it's in our row. Move on to 8. 8 is valid because there's no 8 in our row. There's no 8 in our column, and there's no 8 in our sub box. We'll move on to our next empty space. We'll try 1. It's not valid because it's in our row. We'll try 2. Not valid. 3. Not valid. 4. Not valid. 5. Not valid. 6. 6 is not valid because there's a 6 in our column. We'll move on to 7. It's in our row. We'll move on to 8. It's invalid because it's in our row. We'll move on to 9. 9 is valid because there's no 9 in our row. There's no nine in our column and there's no nine in our sub box. So now we'll move on to the last empty space of this row. And you can already see that there's an issue. We have all the numbers but six in our row already. So six would have to go here for the row to be valid. But since we have a six in the sub box already, it's invalid. So now we'll have to use our backtracking to go back. So we'll backtrack to our previous spot that we put in a number, which was where our nine is. And since there's no other digits we can put in here, we're gonna backtrack even further. So now backtracking to the previous number we added, which is the eight, we'll try putting in nine. Nine is valid because there's no nines in our row, column, or sub box. So we'll move on to the next spot. We'll try putting another number in here. And one through seven is not valid, so we'll try eight. And this is not valid as well because there's an eight in our column. And we'll try nine. Nine is not valid because there's a nine in our row already. So this is invalid and we'll backtrack again. And since we've exhausted all the numbers in this location, we'll have to backtrack again to the previous number. So we'll try five here. Five is invalid because there's a five in our row and column. So we'll try six. There's no six in our row. There's no six in our column and there's no six in our three by three box. So this is valid. And we'll move on to our next empty space. 
and you can see how through recursion and backtracking we're going to be solving until we hit a dead end where we can't put any more valid numbers in and then backtracking to try the next number in a spot we added. So I'm going to skip ahead to the solution because otherwise we'd be here going through this example for the next 45 minutes. And this is what we end up with. And you can see that in our first position, we added a number. We had put a one here originally. And with backtracking, we end up backtracking so many times back to this space that in the solution it's a four. So this is the solution to our Sudoku board. Let's jump into the code. The first thing we're going to want to do is create our isValid function. And this function will check each row, column, and three by three box to see if the digit we're entering into the blank space is valid there. And we'll pass three things to this function. The number that we're entering into the blank space, the row it's in, and the column it's in. And what we'll do in this function is loop nine times through each space in the row and column associated with this space to check to see if the other values are equal to the number that we're putting into the space. And we'll also check the three by three square. It's a bit of a long conditional statement, but the first check is checking all the numbers in our row, the second is checking all the numbers in our column, and the third is checking all of the numbers in our three by three sub box. And if we find our number value in any of those three instances, we'll return false, otherwise we'll return true. Next, we'll define our solve function. And the reason this is a separate function is because this will be used for our recursion and backtracking. And what we're going to do in this function is loop through each row and each column going space by space, checking to see if it's an empty space, which is represented by a period. And if it is a blank space, we'll try inserting the digits 1 through 9 and check to see if the number we're inserting into the space is valid. And if the number we're inserting into this blank space is valid, we're going to set that space in our board to that number and then do the recursion. And we'll do the recursion by calling our solve function again. And if our solve is returning true, we want to return true here. And this is pretty much used for the case when we're at the end of our board and our solution's valid. But if our solve function is returning false, that means we're needing to backtrack so we'll set our current position on our board equal to period so that we can move back to our previous spaces and change them. So at this point in our function, we'll want to return false. And this is for the case where we've gone through all digits one through nine and none of them are valid in our blank space. So we have to go back to a previous value we entered and change it. And once we've gone through all our cells, we want to return true. And this means we've, we've gone through the whole board and it's valid. So that's it for our solve function. So now in our main solution, we just wanna call the solve function to kick off the solving of the Sudoku board. And that's it for our code, so let's run this. Two minor syntax errors I had in my solution. The first one in our is valid check, I had a parentheses here, but it actually needs to be after the three when it's doing the division. And the second is when we're backtracking, when we set our current position equal to period, I actually put two equal signs, it just needs to be one. Also, I had laid out the conditional like this visually so that it's not too long on one line and you can see it better, but the compiler doesn't like it like this, so I'm gonna put it back into one line. And we should be good now, so let's run this again. All test case passed, so let's submit. Our solution was accepted, so that's it for this problem. If you like this video and wanna see more content like it, make sure to check out my channel. Thanks for watching.